Welcome back to Marion's World and week 10 of the Stitch Journal. Hope you enjoy it. Just drawing the vein lines on another leaf and really it is just to show you how I'm going to decide where the stitches are going to go. You, you can draw your outline and draw these lines on even though they're going to be covered up. I've got three strands of green embroidery cotton and it has just come out of my tangle so I don't know if I've even got any more but I'll start off with this anyway and I've got a decent eye, a short needle and it's not super pointy but that's because my fabric isn't a tight weave and it's easy to sew with. So the first stitch to do today is actually blanket stitch and blanket stitch is really nice to do for leaves and I'm going to use it in two different ways. So the first way is where the loop of the blanket stitch is going to come right around the edge of the leaf. So I've started uh, coming up at the point. I'm going to go down along the midrib and I'm going to come up a little way along my outside line. Because I've drawn on with pencil, I'm going just outside the line. I found the pencil was easier to show you than the disappearing pen. And I'm going to not go right the way down this rib. I'm going to stop short of the rib. Go down again to do another blanket stitch. And this, I'm going to come a little way away again. I'm going to go further than I would if I was doing this a tight stitch. Like that. So I'm leaving room. I keep the tension on with my other hand. Come down to here. Back up at the edge. Leaving a little bit of room. Making sure that the loop goes around the back of my needle. So really it's a blanket stitch, which might look a little bit odd to you because I'm doing it obviously as a left-handed person. And you can absolutely draw the most beautiful outline with the loop of the blanket stitch. It'll go wherever you want. You can see I'm now, I've now got round to where the lines are drawn for the leaf veins. And so if I just carry on down at the same angle, everything will be fine. This is a really nice way of filling in a leaf or a petal on a flower. I could definitely use it in more strands or use it with a pearl cotton either. I'm starting to bring my stitch in as the leaf uh, narrows. I'm just going to keep my stitches lying on the same way but the loop will just follow around the edge of the, the edge of the leaf and I think here I can probably well maybe I will get one more in one more little stitch and then I'll take this tail and instead of just hooking straight down there I'll take it right down to the bottom of the leaf and I've done one half. Now I definitely would not work up the other side. I need to work back up and I don't like finishing off if I don't have to. So I'm just going to walk what I call walk my needle back, which you don't have to. You can easily finish off or you can thread up the back of your work. But it just saves me having to turn the hoop over and I'm happy to just walk my needle back up. So I'm back up almost to the top and I'm going to take the next stitch down this side as if it's the second stitch really. So back down to here. Up on the, just past the edge for my next stitch. And so I'm looping the exact opposite way down. If you came up the other side your stitches would look different because they sort of need to be a mirror image of each other and so by starting again at the point that's what you're going to get. I actually think I'm going to run out of this green. 
I just have to see whether I have another bit of it in my tangle. Otherwise, I'll just change colour and it'll be fine. But blanket stitch, when you do it like this, it almost looks like it's been designed to embroider leaves. I'll get one more, I'll maybe get one more. I'm so mean with thread. I hate I hate wasting it at all. That's actually pearl cotton. But do you know what? It doesn't bother me. It'll make it look pretty. And there's actually actually just enough. Look, that's all I've got in my tangle. But that's all I need to fill. So It'll work fine. I'll come up inside the loop of my final blanket stitch there. And I'm just going to manage to get maybe two or three stitches. The green's almost the same, but it's going to change. And see what I mean? You can you can you can definitely mix and match your threads if you're doing something natural. It's not going to look funny because I've changed from the three strands of the stranded to that little bit of pearl cotton and nobody's going to know the difference really. So I think I'm going to just use the rest of this because I either take this off my needle now and put it in my thread jar because there won't be enough but what I could do is just decide to whip this bit of stem stitch. And I think that's what I'll do. And I really like that. And I'll whip up this one as well. And now I've got to the top and I've still got a bit. I'm going to carry this bit of stem stitch on just for no reason other than once it's used it's going to end up in my thread jar so i might as well just use what i've got this leaf is going to get a second set of blanket stitches i've just pulled another thread from my tangle and it is a pale sort of straw color yellowy straw color there's again three strands of it so I'm just going to thread it on as it is but this time I'm going to come up at the middle rib and I'm going to do the blanket stitch the other way round so I'm going to go down the gap it doesn't have to be all the way but you can do it all the way if you want I'm going to go down the gap come back up at the middle of the vein into my loop and I'm going to carry on and put a stitch into every gap but this time the loops of the blanket stitch are going to be tight together and they're going to make the middle vein of the leaf I'm not going right down to the end of my leaf because I don't want the the yellow to go all the way down but you can do you could go all the way down to the bottom if you wanted to and you could go right down to there but I've just decided I don't want to and this is why I made the green stitches shorter than the middle rib to allow for this little um it'll look like a little twisted stem in the middle and that will be the middle of the leaf and they're just going to lie in those gaps get right down to the bottom I'm going to just miss that one out i think and take my thread right into the bottom of the leaf there i want to work it back up 
just like I did before with a tiny tiny stitch it just saves looping on the back So walk your thread to the next place and then I can come up in need to be in there really so that's where I'll be oh no I need to be at the top actually I'm going to just I don't think there's room for a blanket stitch there I'm just going to do a nice straight stitch down into the into the spine and then come up to do the next stitch and that'll be great and then we're set to do back into each little gap up at the mid rib and a looped blanket stitch around and I'll get a double line down the middle of the leaf. You could do this in the same colour, so it doesn't have to be contrasting colours. I think it looks nice if you use two toning ones either. Could you use a light green for the middle ones that I'm doing in yellow and a darker green for the edge of the leaf that looks really nice and a bit more natural than mine are now but I'm just embracing the colour at the moment and plus it makes it easier to demonstrate if you can see the the contrast that's going on you can see I'm always holding the tension on my blanket stitch loop it just makes it easier and that's one thing you can do because of working in the hoop if I wasn't in the hoop I wouldn't probably be able to do that in the same way I think one more and then finish off at the bottom I was just considering whether to whip this little piece again but I don't think I will what I am going to do I'm just going to come to there and I'm going to do another little curly cue I'm just going to do it with a bit of split stitch so I think that's it I've done a nice little curl and I'll finish finish that so that's a blanket stitched leaf the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a new technique I've drawn an oak leaf, which is just really a wiggly line. It has usually a big lobe at the top of the leaf instead of a point, when it goes down to a point where it connects to the tree. I'm going to introduce you to cruel embroidery technique, which is called laid work. And on cruel embroidery and working with wool in your needle instead of stranded cotton, Quite often, in the, especially in the old, old um, examples of the work, they would work a leaf in two different halves, and so they'd do two different techniques, one half to the other. So I thought that would be nice to show today, because there are and two different stitches, two different ways of doing something. So I've actually got a selection of cruel wools here. These are, that's Appleton cruel wool. They're two vintage ones. Um, they are Penelope. Penelope. Uh, if you don't have cruel wool, you could definitely do this with your stranded cotton. Or if you have tapestry wool, try um, taking that down because I, I definitely successfully used tapestry wool that was, um, I was going to say shredded. I know I don't mean shredded. I mean, plied down. I took the plies. I'll see if I can find some. So here's a length of uh, tapestry wool. And I have very successfully plied that down until there was just two strands. And it was just as strong. And when it was actually stitched, 
you could not see the difference and you just need to, you can't pull it like um, stranded cotton but if you run your finger down the ply the tapestry wool will eventually be able to unply and then you have two lengths and it just wiggles but once that is stitched it is almost undistinguishable from the cruel wool and you can see it looks like it's thicker at first glance but when I pull that and stitch with it it's almost the same so if you haven't got cruel wool don't worry ply down some tapestry wool or even try that with knitting wool too it will work in fact I'll use that in the next bit just to prove it but at the moment I'm going to use this yellowy green sort of pale mossy colour I'm actually going to do uh, it's not satin stitch because on satin stitch you go the same distance under the work I know I haven't done satin stitch yet so satin stitch will come up here down there and then run under the cloth and come back up here this is different I'm going, going to come up adjacent to the stitch of where I've just gone down and go back over and then back up straight alongside and back down and so what you get on the back instead of the same thing on the back I'm going to get a little series of a sort of running stitches on the back of the work and the stitches will just lie nicely side by side and I am going to go all the way down through this follow, following the outline of the leaf I'm going to try and make all the stitches carry on at this angle that I've drawn on I'm not going to vary them I'm not going to try for variation I'm going to attempt to make them so those ones will be longer it doesn't matter and just try and keep them with enough room between them that they will lie nicely there sometimes as you can see you might have to move your stitch and just find out where you're going to come up you're coming up about well the thickness of your thread of whatever you're using you need to come up that far away from your previous stitch and you go back and forth however long the stitch needs to be you make it that length this is definitely a hoop stitch so if you're not sure where you're going to go down you can always try lying your needle alongside your stitches and then wherever the point of your needle has gone over your line well that's where you're going to go so again I can or I can lie the thread in I can just see I don't want it on an angle I can just see exactly put my needle down where the thread crosses the line I'm going to work the whole side of this leaf in this way keeping them lying beautifully parallel to each other I'll show you what the back of this looks like at the end I think I'll get one more there or maybe not oh, maybe not maybe I'm happy I'll just come in from there's the last one and there's the, I think I'll come into there. It's a very satisfying stitch to do, especially in cruel wool because it's sort of, it's a, you quickly see what's happening. You can see how your stitches are lying. And if you look there, I'm going to do that again. I'll just carry on.
And if you, I don't know whether you can notice. I'll see if I can pull you in a bit. I'm always worried I'm going to go blurry because I try and work so so closely. But here, I've actually got a bit of a gap. It's not huge, and in the grand scheme of things, probably wouldn't be noticed. But I'm actually going to fill it in because I'd rather there was another stitch. I'm not going to bother taking these out. I'm just going to get another stitch in there and I'm going to run my needle up between them and just go short of where the end would be because actually the end's filled in. So I'll just run that stitch underneath and there we go. It's filled in. So there's always things you can do if something you don't think is lying too right, you don't always have to pull it out. There are quite often things you can do that only you will know about at the end. And it will look just as beautiful. It's actually a sunny day here. It's really beautiful. I've already done my phonology wheel painting for today which was a, a hairy bittercress, which is actually a weed, but it's also a flower, so I put it on. I'm so pleased that I'm doing that every day. I thought I wouldn't keep up with it, but I'm managing to. Right, so I'm coming down to the edge of here. I think I am just going to swap to the tiniest bit of satin stitch just because those are going to be a bit more difficult to do. So I'm just going to go back to the outside edge every time and just put those last bits in but I'm trying to still keep that same angle till I almost get to the bottom. And I'll just put a little long stitch in to finish. And I'll put a little bit of split stitch to get that leaf attached to the my branch. I've turned my hoop over so you can see what the outline of that bit of laid stitch is. You know, I've just got these tiny little stitches running around the outline and I'll just take my needle through the loop twice, pull it down and then I'm happy to cut that off. So I've got yellow cruel wool in my needle, same needle, and I'm going to do the second part of this cruel work, a sort of laid work leaf. To start off with, I'm going to lay these stitches on the same diagonal um, line as these previous ones. So I'm going to carry on, even though it's on the opposite side. I'm going to put my first stitch in. And I'm going to come up a bit further away. There are all different ways of doing trellis stitch. I'm going to do the simplest one there is. So I'm going to carry on with that line down to here and you can see how I'm making sure that these lines are going to be as parallel as I can. I use my needle and I'll just move my needle down and wherever that needle looks like it's going to go that's where I'm going to put it in. I'm going to come down that whole side doing exactly the same thing. I'm going up at the rib I want to sort of see, make sure I've got the line. I can line, I can lie this thread in and I can see exactly where it has to go. Down it goes. And now that one really has to come all the way across. So I'm going to come across it. I'm going to pretend that little gap's not there and just carry that stitch right the way down to here. Come back up. You'll just get into the habit of knowing how far away. You could measure it, but it doesn't matter if some are bigger and smaller, if you've never done it before. It's all practice, and the more you do it, the more even it'll all get. 
And it's really nice to do um, crewel work and laid work. I do have an old um, fire screen half done and I really should get back onto it. One day I'll show you it. So even if you don't pull your needle up and you're just practicing, did you see how what I did there? I pulled my needle up and I just laid my my needle in to say, have I got the right distance? Am I going to be on the right line? I am, so I'm going to pull the needle up. So it's all little little ways of just making things easier than you think they're going to be. This is probably the last one I'll do this way round. Maybe one more. And now, to turn this into trellis stitch, I need to do the stitches the opposite way over, hoping to make little diamonds. So I'm going to start quite low down. There's no point me starting on that outside edge. So I'm going to come up there. And I'm just going to practice where my line is going to be. So obviously that's going to make for quite a wide diamond. I think I need to be here. I'm going to go down at that point. I'm aiming for squares really. I come up. And again, I'm going to just practice my thread. Go down at the, at the rib. And I'm going to work my way back up to the top, lying my stitches along the same plane all the time, the same angle. Maybe that I need to put another one in there. If I practice across, maybe I can get one there. I'll just come up and I'll put a little one in. Like that. And I'll go back over to here. Practice, practice the line and go down where it looks like it needs to be. And this is definitely a more stylized sort of a look, but it's still beautiful and I really like it. It's not something I do very often, but I've got a feeling I've got a new pincushion going to be coming. And this is the technique I'd be really liking to do, a bit of, a bit of cruel work. Okay, I'm going to finish that thread off as well, because the next stage, can do it in the same colour, but the whole way of making this look bonny is to use a third colour. I've actually, look, I've got a bit of orange there, must have used ages ago. So I'm just going to pull that bit out and so this is the final stage of this trellis stitch. I start at the top of the bottom, it doesn't matter where. I'm going to come up just under the crossed threads and I'm going to take a tiny little stitch just across the cross and that anchors those stitches down and I'm going to work right up through this lattice taking a tiny little straight stitch and all your straight stitches need to be in the same angle so just you're ignoring the shape of the leaf really and working up your leaf or whatever shape you're filling in putting these little couching stitches so that makes trellis stitch a couching stitch And look how lovely it's looking already. And that's why quite often the couching stitch is in a real contrast. And there's another lovely variation of this stitch. I nearly did, but I thought it was maybe taking it a bit too far on until you'd had a go at actually doing the simplest version. But there's a real beauty called um, battlement couching.
So if you want to look up what battlement couching is, it's really lovely. And if it doesn't come in the leaves, it might come in the flowers, because I think, I think it might be flowers next page. Although don't hold me to that, because I might, my ideas change all the time. So I should end up with a regular little grid. Look, I've missed that one out. I'll have to go back to it. And I've missed one out again, look. I'll get that on the way down, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a spine with this same thread and I'm just going to split stitch all the way down. But I'm going to make them quite small. So as I come down to there where I've missed the stitch, I'll just go to one side and put it in. I can definitely do this in fantasy colours if you want, or could have made it all autumn colours, or I could have made it all green, different shades of green. Um, I could have done purple or pink. On cruel embroidery, it, it really doesn't matter. It's whatever you like to look at. I'm going to take this split stitch down the side of here because it'll look nice. So the final piece that needs to happen now is the edging. So I'm going to use the split down tapestry wool. And as you can see, it is wiggly. I could, I could dampen it. I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. It's going to sew just as good. What I am going to do is I'm going to start, start on this side, right at the bottom. And I'm going to do a tiny chain stitch going all the way around my leaf. And that will just be the finishing off of it. This might be a little bit thick actually. Or it's more the fact that this would work if I was doing a bigger leaf, but because the leaf's small. I think it's going to be fine though. I'm going to keep tension on my thread while I get the same size stitches going all the way round. You do need to do them quite small. So if you wanted to do them in stranded cotton and just use a couple of threads, you definitely could do that. But I'm happy that I'm doing it with this at the moment. And following the outline around. What it does make is just the beautiful finishing edge, finishing touch to the laid work. So if you haven't done anything like that before, just have a nice practice of it because it, is, it can get such lovely effects. I think for a sampler, it's definitely a good technique to be including. I'm just going to carry on and I'm going to do all the way around the whole thing. So I'm coming down this side as well. I'll show you when I'm finished. That's the finished laid work. Oak leaf and the green edging has gone round there beautifully and I just love the way that trellis stitch looks. I've got my next leaf drawn on. I've just drawn a pointed oval. But the main thing I want you to see is that I've drawn two parallel lines that are either side where a middle would be. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to draw some lines this way so you can see which way I'm going to angle the stitches. I have a length of pearl cotton in my needle. It's this really nice variegated one because uh, the thicker thread's going to help me show the stitch. 
I'm going to start at the point and both sides will be getting worked at the same time and this stitch is Cretan stitch. A Cretan stitch is a variation of feather stitch which is also a variation of blanket stitch they're all, once you start to explore different embroidery stitches, there are so many that are just a variation of one of another of another. And so this is made in the same way as blanket stitch. But these two lines are going to be really helpful. So I am going to, I've got to come up at the point. I'm not going to lay these too close together, but they can be closed entirely. But I'm going to leave a little gap just so you can see the pattern of the stitches because it makes a really lovely pattern. So I'm going down at the edge of the leaf and I'm going to come up on the, the parallel line that's inside, uh, that's on the same side. So in essence I'm sort of making the start of blanket stitch there. And I pull that in and I'm going to go over to the other side and go down on the perimeter. And I'm going to come up on the opposite side parallel line and just a little way down and pull up, pull up through the loop. So in essence what we're doing is doing a little blanket stitch each time. That's a blanket stitch there really. You're coming up on the loop. But I'm going to alternate each side. And instead of the loop going down in a straight line the loop is going to cross backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So if I come back to this side, I'm going to, as I say, I could, I could make them absolutely closed up. I'm going to leave a little gap, go down there and come up on this line. Same distance apart again, pull the loop through and then back over to this side. and onto that side's parallel line. And so you sort of need to have those two parallel lines drawn in for yourself. But you can do them in a disappearing pen if you want. I just drew them on because I don't think it's going to worry me if you can see them. So back over to this side and up there. And back over to that side and up there. So I'm working down each side the same distance apart here, the same distance apart there. And this is quite open. You can open it up more or less. It's up to you. The whole point is that it's done one side then another side and what you get I'm trying to show you right at the end is this beautiful crossed lacing in the middle that sort of does that crisscrosses down and I'm just lying the stitches sort of on the angle that I showed you at the beginning This thread's looking lovely on it, mind. It's a beauty. I can't remember where I got this from. I think maybe I got it from a... from Spring into Wool in April, uh, where there was an embroidery lady who, who dyes her own threads. I think I got it there. And so this is definitely another hoop stitch because you can see how long some of these stitches are going to end up, even on this small leaf. And it enables you to hold on to your thread and pull the tension just nicely. And you can make a wider parallel line if you want. I wouldn't necessarily make it much narrower or else you're not really going to see the beauty of, of what Cretan stitch does. 
You could definitely make your stitches nearer together, as in I could get another stitch in there between each one of these, but I'm not going to bother with this one. But it was more that you can see how beautiful a stitch it is. And it's no more difficult than doing blanket stitch. You just put your lines on and do one side, then another side. And I'm just trying to decide whether I want another stitch there, and I think I will. And I think that will... I want to do a short one there. I'm going to bring that in tight though this time. And I'm going to do a knotted stem stitch here. Just to take the leaf in on this line that I've already got drawn. So there's my leaf finished and I hope you can see this beautiful lacing down the middle. It's really lovely. It's showing off really nicely on this variegated, but you will see it even more so if you close the stitch up and use a single, a single colour either. And this is how I'm leaving my tree for today. So I've done the blanket stitch, both with the loop on the outside and the loop down the rib, which makes a lovely leaf filling stitch. I did Cretan stitch, which is a variation of feather stitch and blanket stitch. And I've actually done another one in one colour and closed it up. I'm not sure whether you're going to get the beautiful woven middle there. But if you do it in real life, you definitely will. Uh, it's really nice down the middle. I actually offset the middle there so it's bigger on this side and smaller on that side. With all sorts of things it's just experiment and see what happens and then I've introduced some laid work which is a cruel embroidery technique and that has trellis stitch so with uh, two colors of green and an orange and a yellow and I actually did another one as well I did another one up here and this one is green pink and red and a straw coloured outside and I did that outside in cruel wool and you can see there's a big difference in the size of the stitches from the other one. I did a tinier stitch entirely. But if you want to do these, want to try these stitches out and make something larger then that's a good way to practice. So this is only the third week on here but so far so good. I hope you like that. The um, trees are starting to look really, really pretty and I really like the cruel uh, laid work techniques. They're really lovely. So I expect to see them come in um, later on as well. Um, thank you everyone for all the lovely comments you made about my Kawandi inspired dress. I've already been wearing it and I do feel like a million dollars when it's on and I will be wearing it to the sewing show. So I'm going to down to Birmingham next week. So I'll be going uh, next Wednesday afternoon. Uh, my sister and I are going together. We've got a bed and breakfast booked for two nights. So we're booked in for Wednesday night and then we'll spend all day Thursday at Sewing for Pleasure, which is happening at the NEC at Birmingham. It'll be the third year I've been. I actually found it by total accident originally. Um, we went to a Doll's House show there three years ago, and it was a bit of a, you know, oh, let's treat ourselves. We'll go away for a couple of nights and go to this Doll's House show. And then on the the day of the Doll's House show, we weren't actually very impressed with it. it. It wasn't as good as we were hoping. But on the way out, we could see all these people congregated at another part of the NEC. And here's this great big thing saying, sewing for pleasure. We hadn't even heard of it before. So off we went back to the car 
and we're sitting on our phones trying to find out whether it was on the next day, whether we could go or not, whether we could still buy tickets. And because we had another night still in our bed and breakfast, we bought the tickets there and then and went back on the Sunday and thought it was absolutely marvellous. So we went last year, did the same thing. And so this will be the third year. But I already asked permission to take my camera and do some filming for you. So I'm looking forward to doing that because that'll, that'll be different from what I've done the past two years. It's very vibrant there. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And in the meantime, I'm showing you this because I was so pleased with it. This is a curtain and look how gorgeous that material is. So this is vintage Laura Ashley. My sister actually found the pair of curtains in the charity shop. I think she paid five pounds for the pair, but it, they're huge. So she's given me one and she's kept one. So it's absolutely massive. It's got this lovely pink lining, which is sort of, um, it's very worn and faded, but that suits me fine. But I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking. There's a new dress there without any shadow of doubt. And I won't even need to put a hem up because I'll just use the hem of the curtain already. So expect to see that coming up. I'm not quite sure what style of dress I'll make. I think I'll just do it on the machine. But maybe a pinafore or maybe some sort of a shift dress. I think I'll, I think I'll be doing that straight away because it's just so lovely. As if I didn't have another curtain sitting on the floor waiting to turn into a dress as well. But curtain dresses, <laughs> curtain dresses are really nice. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. And just say thank you for watching. Thank you for all the lovely comments you've made about all sorts on my channel. But in particular, lately, this the um, needle book Hasif and the Kawandi inspired dress they've both been receiving quite a lot of views and comments at the moment so thank you very much for that and to any any subscribers that have come because they've seen this the needle book and the and the dress uh, welcome to my channel uh, and thank you for everybody who's been supporting me uh, by comments by watching over on the Kofi page. I'm really, really grateful to you all and thank you very much. I feel as if I'm, I might be getting into the swing of it a bit now. So um, thank you again and I look forward to seeing you when you next visit Marion's World. Thank you very much. Bye for now.